Does your lower back hurt when you squat? Watch this. Our next caller is Nick from Connecticut. Nick, what's up? How can we help you? What's up, Nick? Hey, hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Um, first, first off, I just want to say uh, thank you guys so much for uh, the show and the entertainment. Uh, my older brother uh, told me about you guys, and uh, I've been listening for about two years now, and we, we talk about you guys all the time, so thank you. Good deal. Rad. Good older brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, my question has to do with uh, lower back pain. Um, and just some background information, if it helps. Um, I'm 26 and I've been lifting for about three years now. I started because I was a little bit overweight. I was 220 at 510. Um, so I was pretty unhappy with that. So I decided to, you know, cut down on my, my calories and I, I started weight training and I was able to lose 40 pounds uh, in about four months. Wow. Um, but so I, I really started to just enjoy weight training. I didn't care so much about the weight. I cared more about, you know, getting stronger and and looking good. Um, but I would say for at least the past year, I've been dealing with this lower back pain on and off. Um, and just for my programming, I've done a lot of different things, but last year I, I did anabolic. Um, and then the beginning of this year, I bought performance and aesthetic, but I wanted to start from the beginning. Cause I know you guys talk about doing those three in order. So I did anabolic again. Uh, it went really well. And then I just started performance. Um, and it seems that when I, when I squat, I get this lower back pain. It gets like really tight. It's really hard to proceed with my sets. And then from there, like any bent over uh, exercise, it, it really tends to, to, to hurt and to, you know, flare up. Um, and so really my question is, you know, where should I start from here on, on fixing my squat um, so that I'm pain free? Um, and that I can, you know, proceed with my, my lifts and, and get stronger. Okay, Nick. What, what, so two things, um, one, you don't have to squat Two, If you don't squat, you'll never be able to squat. So consider that. Okay. Now it sounds like you want to squat. And I'm just saying that for other people listening right now, because you do get advice on social media of people saying you don't have to squat to build up your legs. But if you don't practice that skill, you'll never have that skill. So we think it's very important to practice such a fundamental movement, okay? Here are the main, general main reasons why someone's low back bothers them when they squat. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm going to hit on one that is is your issue because you're not in front of me. I can't do an assessment. I can't work with you in person. Generally, what we've seen are these three things. Yeah, so I'm going to give you like the most common ones, okay? Could be ankle mobility or foot stability. So it could be down in the feet and the ankles. That one's relatively common. It can be the hips. So it can be hip stability or hip strength or mobility. It could also be core stability or core weakness that could be causing the issue. And then finally, the last one I would say is upper back instability. So the thoracic area where you might lack some stability and, uh, and lack of mobility. So any one of those or combination of those can cause undue stress on the low back whenever you do an exercise like a squat. So what's the next step? The next step would be to do specific movements, mobility exercises, connecting movements on those areas to really identify what your problem is. Do you have MAPS Prime Pro? Because that's, that's what will have prime. everything. I'd Prime. Prime them with the assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have Prime or I, Prime Pro? I, I do not. Okay. We're going to send both of them to you. Now, what I want you to do in those programs is number one, go to Prime, do the compass test, see how you do with that. And then two, go through those areas that I talked about, do movements in there and see how you feel and how you do. And do them before you do a squat. See if you notice a benefit. If you do notice a benefit, stick to those movements and get really good at them. But it's the odds are, I'd say probably 85% that it's one of those areas. I want to. Uh, can we? Uh, can I stick him in the forum too? Yeah. Doug, can you hook him up with the forum? Just, you get a lot of just, free stuff, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I was going to hook him <laughs> up with the whole bundle. I was going to. I was going to set you up with Prime and then stick you in the in the forum because uh, we could sit here and, and guess all day with our experience. And I think Sal hit it on the head. Those are probably the four most common, but it could be a, a, a whole host of different things potentially going on with you. The, the best way we can get to the bottom of this is if I actually saw you uh, squat, and so you could do that in the forum if you like. So. I mean, first, if you want to try and troubleshoot it yourself, uh, go through the the prime compass and, and do what Sal is saying uh, to try and get to the bottom of yourself. If you're still struggling, you know, get on the forum and do a video of yourself uh, from the front and the side 
so we can take a look uh, at your form and technique, and then maybe we can see where there's a breakdown and then coach you from there and do it barefoot if you do it. So do it barefoot for us and and give us like 10 squats from the front and the side view. And from that, we should probably be able to get a pretty good idea of what's going on. But um, definitely what Sal's saying are, are the most common things that uh, that we see. Yeah, generally it's an instability. I mean, a lot of times people will then avoid the squat completely. And to Sal's point, there's like many camps out there that, you know, are more than happy to kind of, uh, you know, show you how to do that. However, we think it's a fundamental movement that uh, everybody should try to maintain as much as possible. So it is going to take some work. So, you know, identifying this is going to, it's going to take some work on your end to really kind of go through that and assess where that instability lies, whether it's coming from, you know, ankles, hips, you know, somewhere in your back, a core instability. So where you don't have that strength and control, you know, we can do the work to, to, to build that back. So the, there is an answer. The good news is you're 26 and you're already trying to troubleshoot this now. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, right. this this typically is something that people wait years and years and years. And then and, it's harder. Yeah. And it just gets more difficult. So the fact that you're already kind of trying to troubleshoot this and figure it out and get to the bottom of it, um, and you will, you'll, we'll unlock something. We'll be able to get to the bottom of what what's limiting you or what's causing this. And then it'll just, from that point, it'll be a matter of you putting in the practice to to work on that, whether it's a weakness or instability or whatever it may be. But the fact that you're 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 researching it, trying to figure it out at 26 right now, I think this is going to pay you uh, pay you back tenfold in the future. So you'll be able to know what you need to do um, as you get older, and these things start to get progressively worse. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I appreciate it. Yeah. I've definitely got to that. I've gotten to that point where um, you know you feel like you want to give up squatting. You know, maybe I should do unilateral stuff. Just just something because you obviously want to keep progressing, but at the same time. Uh, I feel like I'm being held back. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, smart. Well, Very yeah. smart at your age to, yep. to address yep. it this way. So good job. Hey, I, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, would it be okay if I shout out my brother real quick? Go for That's it. That's fine. Yeah. All right. So uh, my brother's Ron. This is a 10 year anniversary this month. So shout out to him. Happy anniversary. Uh, oh, that was really yeah. go, Ron. That, that was a really nice younger brother. I thought you were yeah. going to say something like snarky towards him. <laughs> I was expecting you yeah, to no. stink, Ron. Uh, yeah. Happy yeah. anniversary, Ron. Yeah, very nice. I uh, thank you guys so much. Again, I appreciate everything you guys do, and I love the podcast. You got wow. it, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Man. Yeah, so so I wanted to address that that crowd on uh, social media that says that. So I'm going to say something that's so ridiculously you know silly and obvious, just to highlight how silly their argument is. It's like, imagine if you went to the doctor and you're like, oh, man, it hurts when I walk. Yeah. And the doctor's like, well, don't walk. Here's a scooter. Yeah, It'll drive you around scooter. everywhere. The You're only fine. reason why their argument carries any weight whatsoever is because it's what people want to fucking hear. Yeah. yeah. That's the only reason why. If yeah. it was, if it's because yep. people want to hear that because it's the easier path. Oh, okay. Yep. I'll just quit. I'll just do yeah. something. Or different. I can't, I can't, I can't do an overhead press. Oh, it's okay. Don't do that anymore. It's like, yeah. well, you never want to be able to reach over your head with some strength. Squatting, standing and squat, like name another leg exercise that is as functional in real life. I mean, you're going to have to squat at some point. Yeah. Strengthen, don't lose that ability. So when, when people are like, oh, I can't squat, it hurts. And then you've got these stupid, you know, social media coaches who are like, hey, you don't, you could develop great quads without ever squatting it. Well, okay, maybe technically, but why? Yeah. That is a fundamental movement. He's got pain with it. Let's figure out what's going on. I, so I think I'm so again. passionate about it because this is where I, at 26 or so is about where I'm at, where I am abandoning it. I am, yeah. I'm having issues and I'm a bad, it wasn't until I was like 30 before I really started to work the other yep. direction. And I tell you what, I'm so glad I did because I find myself probably, I don't know, 50% of the time when I'm with my son, I'm in that position <laughs> yeah. and I'm comfortable. Yep. I'm comfortably down in that position and able to play with him on the floor. And I don't have to be like, and I do, I have vivid memories of seeing my, my stepdad and like other dads of that who have to like lay on their side and stuff to like play with their kid. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're 35 or 40 years old and you can't even get down on, get down and you, their knees are too bad to get down on a knee. They can't well, squat. The all it's, down. it's, it's a, um, you know, it's a compound effect to that too. If you can't squat, what's that going to do to your knees? What's right. that going to do to your ankles? Like it, your entire kinetic chain is going to be affected by that decision. So you know, you might as well like put the work in now. So long term, you're pain free. Look, when I can't do an extra, a common exercise, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there that I can't do. That's totally fine. Okay. I can't walk on my hands. That's okay because I'm never going to need to walk on my hands. <laughs> yeah. But there's a common extra. If I can't do a common exercise, then what I'm trying to do is figure out why. Why can't I do this one common movement? Why does it hurt? Let me fix that. Let me figure that out so I can do it because 
I don't plan on not working out again, you know, anymore in five years. I plan on doing this for the rest of my and life. And I feel like there's two big ones that are are commonly let go, and that's the the barbell overhead press and the barbell back squat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those two movements I think are so important to be able to do. And if you can't do them right now, then you should Dude, be working I, towards that. At least. I am not gonna call anyone out, but I do remember specifically when we were going through fitness models to find people for our program. So if you buy one of our programs, you'll notice we're not the ones demoing the exercise anymore. It's fitness models. And I specifically remember Justin coming in the day after interviewing these people, having physique competitors and bodybuilders yeah. do exercises and him coming back being like, they couldn't do an overhead press. I mean, develop muscular shoulders, everything. Yeah, they look they great, but... Yeah, they couldn't. They couldn't even do a, a basic function of an overhead position. Yeah. So, and and, and do you want to lose that ability? It's, that's silly. So you know, I know it's nice to look good. I get that, but if you hear a fitness influencer tell you, "No, don't worry about that. It hurts. Try something else. It's much easier, and you'll still develop a nice looking physique." Change the channel. Don't follow them. They're they're morons.